In the late 1990s, Venezuela's economy was in crisis. As oil prices dropped globally, the country's revenue decreased to the point of collapse. Inflation levels went out of control, the banking system was in crisis, and poverty levels rose dramatically. Amidst all this chaos, there was one man that took the opportunity and offered an alternative political system that shapes the future of the country to this day. His name was Hugo Rafael Chavez. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and click that like button for more videos. Venezuela's modern economy has been closely linked to the price of oil, hence why it has suffered from instability. Oil is Venezuela's main export and accounts for nearly 90% of the country's revenue. It has the world's largest proven oil reserve. This has made the economy and the prosperity of the country very much dependent on the international oil prices. One of the dips in oil prices came in the late 1980s. Prior to that, Venezuela enjoyed a steady economic growth and its citizens enjoyed some of the highest standards of living in Latin America. After the Arab oil embargo of 1973, Venezuela saw a sharp increase in oil revenue which helped the country's economic development. However, as most of the economic growth was tied to the price of oil, any disruptions in the international oil markets would have had negative impact on the economy. As it happened, international oil prices sharply declined in the late 1980s, and Venezuela was plunged into crisis. Poverty levels rose to over 50% and inflation levels spiraled out of control. The neoliberal policies of then-president Carlos Perez, which were supported by the International Monetary Fund, contributed to the rise of poverty levels. It all culminated in the 1989 uprising, which was a large protest which spread across the country and led to a brutal crackdown by the government and resulted in hundreds of people being killed. After these events, the political instability continued and eventually, in 1992, a young military officer, whose name was Hugo Chavez, together with loyal military officers and with the support of the Cuban government, launched a military coup against the unpopular presidency of Perez. It was the first time when Hugo Chavez received a nationwide prominence and was on the spotlight. The coup attempt, however, failed, leaving hundreds of people dead and Hugo Chavez arrested and jailed. But the cracks in the political system of Venezuela only worsened after the coup. As in the following years, the country experienced banking crisis, lower standards of living, and even higher poverty levels. Hugo Chavez was eventually released from prison and continued his political career, this time through legal means and elections. He became more and more popular among the disenfranchised and lower income members of society, and he was offering them an alternative political system to the status quo. During times of uncertainty and poverty, he ran a campaign of change and managed to win the presidential election in 1998. Hugo Chavez assumed office in February of 1999 and made it clear from the very beginning that he would transform the country's political and economic system. At some point, his approval rating was close to 80% and many Venezuelans admired Chavez. He managed to guarantee himself more powers through the National Assembly, which allowed him to pass laws by decree. As he was consolidating more and more power, the opposition against him was growing. While many in the country supported his policies, others were getting worried about his increasingly radical agenda and his close ties to the Cuban government, alienating the United States and limiting press freedoms. He also enacted changes to place the state-owned oil company even more under government supervision and he used the revenue to finance his social programs. As he called it, his Bolivarian revolution was in its early stages when the workers of the state-owned oil company began protests and strikes against Chavez's policies. While Chavez was strengthening ties with Cuba, he created a lot of internal and external enemies for himself. A significant part of the Venezuelan population did not want a Cuban-style government and some business and military leaders began plotting against the government. It all culminated in April of 2002 
when a very large anti-government demonstration was held in Caracas demanding that Chavez resigns. As clashes between pro-government and anti-government forces turned violent and people got killed, the military stepped in and arrested Chavez. This was a flashback or like a deja vu for Hugo Chavez as he himself attempted a coup d'etat in 1992 and failed and now he was on the receiving end of a coup which got him arrested. However, this military coup did not last long as Chavez's loyal supporters took to the streets. So Chavez got arrested and transferred to a military base. While in captivity, an opposition leader named Pedro Carmona quickly swore in as the new president of Venezuela. He immediately abolished the rule of law and assumed total power. Then, fearing a right-wing dictatorship, the supporters of Chavez rushed to the streets and demanded the return of their legal president. Under so much public pressure, the newly formed government quickly collapsed and within 48 hours, and with the help of loyal military officers, Hugo Chavez was restored to power. The coup plotters failed miserably while Chavez emerged victorious. At that time, the United States' role in the coup was somewhat ambiguous. There was no evidence of direct involvement and organizations, but however, it was clear at the time that high-ranking US officials had prior knowledge of the coup. Also, as soon as the president for one day, Pedro Carmona, swore in, the US was one of the few countries to recognize him straight away. But after Carmona's government quickly collapsed, the US condemned the coup and showed their support for the democratically elected government of Hugo Chavez. In the years to come, the relationship between Venezuela and the United States would continue to deteriorate while Hugo Chavez was in power. After that, in the early and mid-2000s with the steady increase in oil prices, Hugo Chavez was able to stabilize the economy and decrease poverty levels by half. However, again, the over-reliance on oil revenue would soon turn to be detrimental as Venezuela would go into hyperinflation and deep economic crisis after Hugo Chavez's death and his eventual successor, Nicolas Maduro. And this was how Hugo Chavez came into power in Venezuela. His early presidency was full of turbulence and crisis, but he managed to survive. He transformed the political system of Venezuela, cut poverty levels, and improved the standards of living for millions of people. However, after his death and the collapse of oil prices, Venezuela went in deep economic crisis, which still holds to this day.